of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a beautiful way. Do you know what Allah says? He says that life's the greatest test. He says that life's a borrowed space, return upon rest. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a beautiful way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Welcome our young viewers of Ikhra Bangla to a brand new series, Islam, the way of life. Inshallah. We will be going through so much with you in this, um, in this amazing series. My name is Abul Hasnat. I'll be your host for this series. Before we do anything else, we want you to listen to some Quranic recitations and then I'll introduce you to this show. A'udhu Billahi Minash بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مغيم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرأ سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يكون له كن فيكون صدق الله العظيم. صدق الله العلي العظيم. ما شاء الله. الحمد لله. What beautiful recitation we've just had. So, what we're going to do throughout Islam, the way of life. When shall this is your show? All of you young Ikra Bangla viewers, this show is all for you. Coming across the bottom of the screen, you will see our email. You can email in us and tell us what you want to know, what you want to see, what you want to talk about in this show, inshallah. And maybe even take your chance to come and join us on this show. So before I do that, let's get our first free guest for, um, for this series. I'm going to come all the way over to my right here. Please introduce yourself. What's your name and how old are you? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar and I am nine years old. MashaAllah. 
Young man on the far side, introduce yourself. What's your name and how old are you? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Suleiman and I'm eight years old. MashaAllah. And in the middle here we have young Adam who's four years old. Is that right, Adam? MashaAllah. So we have with us Suleiman, Omar and Adam who's going to join us for the show. So what do you have in plan in store for you guys? We are looking to do the seerah, which is the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we will do segments of his life throughout the show. We also want to look maybe at some hadith and talk about good morals, good manners. All these things that will help you to understand more in life and how to be a better person, inshallah. And we also want to do some nasheeds at some point. We are open to ideas because this show is not about me, it's about all of you guys. Our young Ikra Bangla viewers. It's about all of you guys and what you want to learn. So inshallah, we hope that you will enjoy this show, enjoy this series. Right, the first thing we want to do, we want to look at the life of the Prophet. I'm going to ask my young viewers, my, my, my young guests today some questions. Hopefully they'll help us to understand what, what we want to know here. So, um, I'm going to ask a really trick question. Put your hands up if you know the answer, okay? When we say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, why do we say sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Does anybody know? Put your hands up if you know the answer. Uh, Suleiman, you look like you know the answer. What do you think it is? Send salawat upon him. MashaAllah, yes. It's to send salawat, to send peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is what we're going to do throughout every time we say we say the name of the prophet muhammad we say sallallahu alayhi wa so together i want the three of you to, to very nicely tell everyone how you would say it so prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mashallah inshallah so let's start by that we will look at the birth of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam One of my favorite books, which I want to show you, which some of you viewers may be ready to read now. Some of you, when you get a bit older, this is one of my favorite books and it's called The Sealed Nectar. This is, this is the biography of the Prophet. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was born in the family of the Banu Hashim. They called it the Banu Hashim section of Makkah. At that time, there were con the countries now is Saudi Arabia. At that time, there was no country borders. It was just regions. So he was in the Arabian area in Mecca. He was born there and he was born in the section of Banu Hashim. Now, a lot of people will ask, what is the Banu Hashim? I'm going, I'm going to ask some of you guys. Do you know what the Banu Hashim is? Omar? It is the tribe where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived in. MashaAllah, it's a very good answer. I hope you viewers at home knew that as well. Banu Hashim is the tribe that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam belonged to. And inshallah, I will look to do, and one of our, one of our um, future episodes, we'll actually spend time looking at the Banu Hashim. Okay? Um, yes, he was born in the Banu Hashim section of the, um, of the um, Makkan tribes on some say it was on a Monday on the 9th of Rabiul Awal and we'll talk about the hadith on why it's a Monday because the Prophet used to always fast on a Monday and he told us he was born on a Monday but we'll come to that another time and fasting is another good deed we'll come to so at that time they never used to do they never used to number the years every year was known by an incident now I'd like to ask the question what year was it Last year, Omar? 2021. This year? It's 2022. 2022. Um, what year were you born? 2013. 2013. Um, what year was um, the World Cup? 2022. So, as you can see, when you number a year, you are, when you look at a year, sorry, you, you, you put a number to it. But at the time when the Prophet Wasallam was born, they would name the year by incidence. So, the Prophet was said to be born in the year of the elephant. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. There is a big story behind why it's called the year of the elephant. And inshallah, in one of our other shows, we'll talk about the year of the elephant because that's such an interesting story. Yeah? Adam, 
Is elephants big or small? Big. They're very big, aren't they? Yeah, well done. So we'll talk about an elephant very soon. The Prophet Sallallahu mother and father <coughs> were called Ab uh, Amina and Abdullah. And unfortunate to the Prophet Sallallahu his father Abdullah died before he was born. So he was born and with just his mother. So we know that when he, after his birth, his mother sent, sent one of her, um, what was one, one of her servant girls to go and tell the Prophet's grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib was, was the leader of the Banu Hashim. So Abdul, um, when the servant girl went and told Abdul Muttalib, Abdul Muttalib happily came. And then he carried the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to the Kaaba. And they prayed Allah and thanked him. Now you might be asking a strange question. Hold on a second. The Prophet وسلم, was a baby, yet his grandfather Abdul Muttalib thanked Allah and took him to the Kaaba. But you, you might say, well, how did he know about Islam? I'm going to ask the question. It's a tricky question, isn't it? If Abdul Muttalib thanked Allah and took the Prophet as a baby to the Kaaba, yet the Prophet has not told him about Islam, how can that be? Omar, you know the answer. Tell us. Because, uh, because there were other messengers, and you might think that they would send other religions, but they actually tried to send Islam. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, that is an amazing answer. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, before him, there were many other messengers. So everybody knew about Allah. Now, what was key about the Banu Hashim was that they are all descendants of Ibrahim and Ismail. So Ibrahim and Ismail had already taught them about Allah <coughs> or taught their ancestors and had already built the Kaaba. So they believed in Allah. And maybe in a future episode, we can talk about how the people that were born <coughs> from there, they unfortunately forgot the ways that Ibrahim taught them. And went the wrong way which is why Allah had sent the Prophet Muhammad to bring them back to the way of Allah and to leave their idol worship but yes regardless of that they actually Abdul Muttalib still took the Prophet and praised Allah and it was Abdul Muttalib the grandfather of the Prophet who named the baby Muhammad and at that time the name Muhammad wasn't that common in Arabia I'm going to come back to nowadays and ask a question to maybe you viewers at home and know. Maybe you guys know the answer. I'm going to ask you the question now. In the world right now, what is the most common name? Suleiman, what's the most common name in the world right now? For Christians, it's maybe Bob. Bob. You think it's Bob. Okay. <laughs> Suleiman, um, Omar, what name do you think? Um, for Muslims, it would actually be Muhammad. Subhanallah. You've taken the answer right out of me. At this current moment, the most common name in the world is Muhammad. Adam, is your name common? Well, your name is the first name of this world, that's right. And Adam was the first name of this world. So Muhammad right now is the most common name across the world. Um, I don't think Bob is though, Suleiman. Because that's for Chris Christian. It's a Christian name. It's not even a Christian. It's a builder's name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Muhammad is the most common name across the world right now. But at the time the Prophet ﷺ was born, it wasn't a common name. So, it was amazing that Abdul Muttalib chose the name Muhammad. And there's people out there that will explain to you that the name Muhammad has a lot of um, has a lot of meaning around the word thank you and being thankful. So clearly Abdul Muttalib was thanking Allah that he had a grandson, Muhammad. And then I'm going to come to a very important topic here, which is, and then Abdul Muttalib arranged on the seventh day of the Prophet, after the Prophet ﷺ was born, that he be circumcised, which is a practice that Muslims do. And there are other religions that do. Um, like Ju uh, Judaism also do circumcision and nowadays it's actually very common here in the United Kingdom to do circumcision. I'm not going to talk about that, I, I've no I noticed your puzzling face but we will talk about circumcision another time but that it's very important to know that Alhamdulillah our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was circumcised on the seventh day and 
that was customary amongst the Arabs. Now, there was a few other reports that we hear of, um, so I'm going to mention them to you just because they, they, they are beautiful to hear, but not all of them may be accurate. Like, um, one of the things that we hear is that Amina said that when the Prophet ﷺ was born, there was, a bit, there was a light that was being issued from her stomach and it lit up the places of, um, lit up all the way to the palaces of Syria. That's what she saw. She saw this amazing light from her stomach. Um, they, they say there were other things like that some, some of the palaces in Persia had crumbled and some, um, there were some issues in churches. But we don't know whether they were true or not. But what we know is that people found it like it was such an amazing time when the Prophet ﷺ was born and so many things happened. We then, we then go on to know, now, what doesn't happen so much now, but in the olden days, and even 50 years ago, um, when a baby, a baby usually takes milk from mother. So a mother can give milk. Now, Amina would give her milk to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but then the first lady, to, so somebody else can also give milk to the baby, the first lady to give milk after Amina to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a lady called Thuwaybah. And Thuwayba, she was one of the freed slaves of Abu, Abu Lahab. So Thuwayba, she gave milk to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we want to look at the childhood. Now, I'm going to spend some time talking about um, <coughs> fostering because this was something really important that took place and it's for all of us to understand it because it will be very strange for our, our, our times now to understand fostering. But as usual, I want to ask my guests here today, what do you think we mean by fostering? Put your hands up if you know the answer. What is, what is fostering? Suleiman? It might be meaning the childhood of the Prophet or was speaking about the Prophet's childhood. So you believe fostering is talking about the Prophet's childhood, okay. Or someone's childhood. Or someone's childhood, okay. So well, Suleiman believes that fostering means to talk about someone's childhood. Okay, we'll come back to your answer. Omar. Uh, I, I think fostering means when someone else looks after someone else's um, baby because they, because they became an orphan. That's a, good, that's a good answer as well. So when somebody looks after somebody else's baby because that baby became an orphan. It's true. Although, Omar, if I said to you, do you guys know what adopting is? Yeah. Okay. And now I'm really getting into discussions here, aren't I? So the difference between fostering and So what do you think adopting means? Because I still do, need to come back to your answer about fostering. So let me find out if you know what adopting means. Solomon, what is adopting? Adopting means if, someone, if someone's died, or their parents have died, or, or they can't take care of another baby and they have to go somewhere else, they have, um, they, um, people they just put, pe um, put little kids online and then they adopt them so they can take care or babysit the person that they're taking care of right now. Mashallah, that's it's a really good answer. I'll come back to you. Omar, do you know what adopting is? Um, adopting is when so, someone gets, gets someone else's baby. Okay. Well, I hope you guys at home took a few guesses on what, what you might think it means. But uh, yeah, in, in today's modern terms, fostering is when somebody looks after a child for a temporary time, which means for a short period. So you guys didn't get it quite right. Fostering is when you look after someone, but you're not going to keep that person forever. You're going to look after that child, so you foster that child. So that's what fostering is. And adopting... Like babysitting. Babysitters, yes, but babysitters will come and babysit, well, look after a baby maybe for half a day and then they'll go. But fostering is you'll keep someone for maybe quite a few months, maybe even a few years, which is what we learn about very shortly, whereas adopting is you take someone forever and they live with you pretty much forever or for an extremely long time and until you decide the adopting is or until they become an adult and then they can move on. So two very different meanings. Now we want to talk about why we are mentioning fostering and adopting because something that was very common amongst the Arabs was they loved to give their children for fostering for the first few years of their life. Now, why did the Arabs give their 
children for fostering. And really, it meant the parents. So in this case, our, our Prophet's mother, Amina, she would give the Prophet wasalam, to a foster mother and the foster mother would take, take Prophet Muhammad as a baby and look after him and bring him up for the first few years and then bring him back to his mother. And it wasn't just the Prophet wasalam, so many babies would be given for fostering when they were born. And the ladies that would come and take them, they were Bedouin, wet nurses. That's another good word. What is Bedouin? Omar. Um, they're like people that live in de deserts. Very good. Bedouins are traveling people that live in deserts. That's right. So, the Bedouin, they were called the Bedouin wet nurses. They would come and foster. So they would take the child away and look after the child for a few years and then bring the child back to the mother. So the Prophet ﷺ was amongst the babies that would be coming, be taken away and then brought back. So, a very good question, because that doesn't happen anymore. Nowadays, a baby is born, like you guys, like you guys, and your mother looked after you, and your mother cared for you, and your mother grew up, and you always were next to your mother. Can you imagine if after you are born as a baby, your mum gave you to a foster mother, and you stayed with a foster mother for, th for two years or three years? and then you were brought back. Can you imagine that? Would you like to do that? If, I, if that happened, and then I'll see, and I'll open my eyes, I'll see her for the first time. I, um, the first thing I'll think, because I'm a little baby, I'll think that she's my mother. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, the amazing mind of a child. It's so true, because we see it in TV programs, don't we? When the dinosaur egg was born and it's in front of the man, it thinks the man's its mother, as they show in cartoon. So, yes, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, it's true, that might happen. But it was so common then, and it was so normal, that that's what, that, that's what we'll do. So, why did they do that? Why did the Arabs send their children away to fostering? So, there's quite a few things that we learned from this. So, the Arab parents <coughs> who were rich and could afford it, because they had to pay these people, they had to pay these foster mothers, who could rich and could afford, they gave their children away because they wanted their child at an early age to grow up in an area that's free and healthy and uh, free and has a healthy surrounding. Now, in the town of Makkah, it was very built up and there was lots of houses and lots of, it was like a city and it was too busy. So the free life of the desert and the freedom and the air to be so um, flowing, they didn't have that. So they wanted their babies to be with the Bedouin wet nurses so they got free flowing air. Second thing they would say is that they gave their babies to grow up in the desert areas because they felt that the baby's bodies would get stronger by getting and would build a better what we call immune system being out in the deserts. We know about immune systems because haven't we recently had the COVID-19? Yeah. yeah. And have you had to take some vaccinations to strengthen your immune? Did you know about that? But I never had COVID. Yeah, so some of you that didn't have COVID didn't have to worry about it. But yeah, no, it's, that's it. So they used to give their children to the Bedouin wet nurses. And the Prophet ﷺ was part of that, was given, so it would make him stronger. As well, they said that the Bedouins spoke the pure Arabic language. Now, why did they say that? Because in the town, the language was so fast and everyone's so busy, they started using shortcuts in language. And so the pure Arabic language was almost missing. So if you put your child into fostering there and the child grew up with Bedouins, they learned the pure Arabic language. Plus, the Bedouins traveled from town to town to town because they never stayed in one place. So the child will pick up different dialects and different language skills from different towns. And also, they would say that you'd pick up good manners, because at that time, the, the, the mannerism of the Bedouins were very humble. They, were very, they had very good humility in them. So these were good things that a child would grow up with. And one of the main things that they felt, and the Arabs felt this, was they said that growing up in the deserts, you were free from immoralities and evil and the dices of the city. <coughs> so this is why they did that. Okay? So, so I'm going to ask you guys some questions about what, what, what is the good thing about fostering? Why did the Arabs do fostering? Um, so can you remember some of the stuff I've just said? I'm going to ask you, Suleiman, why is it good to foster for the Arabs? Because the fostering nurses thinks it's good to live 
in a desert biome because um, it can strong, uh, make the immune system even stronger. Very good, very good. Omar? It's to learn the pure... They do it to learn the pure language of Arabic. Mashallah, mashallah. So there you can see, it's, um, it was a very, it's a very, um, very good thing, very common thing that they did um, in the Arab time. So we know, that, um, so we're just going to now have a quick recap um, for what we've, what we've um, looked at today from the life of the Prophet. So from the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we understood that he, he lost his father before he was born. We also understood that he was named after his grandfather. We also understood that he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a baby, was carried to the Kaaba as an annunciation of his birth. Um, we also know that then he was, um, he was, after his mother, he was also given milk from um, a lady called Thuwaiba, who was the freed slave of Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab, someone that will come to later on, who doesn't have a very colourful um, image in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu um, Alaihi And then we, we quickly spoke about fostering and why there was Bedouin wet nurses that were fostering um, the Arab children. Um, so, inshallah, the next time, in the next episode, we'll look to see exactly what happened, exactly who came to uh, uh, foster the Prophet Sallallahu and his period of time that he was fostered and his life with his foster family. We'll look to cover that in our next episode. Should we be happy that we have our mother and a father? Most yeah. of us, don't we? Yes. I, I want you guys, maybe Sulaiman, can you share with us, what would be the feeling if you didn't have a dad? How would you think you'd feel? I feel I'll feel sad because uh, sometimes dad dads take care of all of the rents, they get all of the money so, <laughs> so that we can eat food. Sometimes uh, sometimes uh, some people that don't even have a dad don't even have a house. Subhanallah. And yeah, that's an amazing thing. So all of you all of you that do have your parents there, inshallah. Be thankful and honour your parents that are there for you because it must be an amazing feeling. And you also think about the sadness of not having a dad as our Prophet And we also make dua for all of those that don't have their dads. There are, there are many children out there that don't have their fathers. And so we make dua for them. We, make, we pray to Allah that Allah gives them happiness, guides them. Allah makes them pious so they can pray for their parents. That's the end of our first episode, inshallah. I hope you guys, are, our Inkra young, Bangla young viewers today enjoy this. Did you guys enjoy the show today? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. As we close our show, please join in to our Nasheed, A Way of Life, and we look to see you in our next episode of Islam, The Way of Life by Ikra Bangla. I'm your host for this show, Abul Hasnat. I'll see you then. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.